Let's turn now to Capitol Hill, where House Democrats have their orders to write articles of impeachment against President Donald J. Trump. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says the president has left them with no choice but to take this historic step. Democrats are weighing charges of abuse of power, bribery, and obstruction of justice. A final vote could take place before the end of the year, making it just the third of its kind in U.S. history. Nancy Cordes is on Capitol Hill with the latest. The president's actions made it necessary. Speaker Pelosi defended her decision to embrace impeachment, saying last night that it is not about politics. If we were not to proceed, it would say to any president, any future president, whoever she or he may be, Democratic or Republican, that our democracy is gone. The president is king. He can do whatever he wants in violation of the law. Her announcement earlier in the day was a big turnaround for someone who said earlier this year that this president wasn't worth impeaching. The president leaves us no choice but to act because he is trying to corrupt once again the election for his own benefit. It's all impeachment all the time. Republicans insisted Democrats had planned it all along. They've always wanted to impeach the president. You watch them at their words, watch them at their actions. The White House called Pelosi's move a blatant, purely partisan attempt to overturn the results of a free and fair election. One reporter asked Pelosi if she hates the president. As a Catholic, I resent your using the word hate in a sentence that addresses me. I don't hate anyone. I pray for the president all the time. So don't mess with me when it comes to words like that. On Twitter, the president quickly accused Pelosi of having a, quote, nervous fit. She fired back last night. The president is a master at projecting. When he calls somebody else nervous, he's the nervous one. All right, Nancy Cordes is joining us now live on Capitol Hill. Uh, so, Nancy, what's next in this process? Well, the president has a deadline of 5 p.m. today to decide whether his lawyers, his White House counsel, will be participating in any future House impeachment hearings, like the hearing that House Judiciary has scheduled for Monday, where you'll have lawyers from all the various committees that have been involved in this investigation coming before the Judiciary Committee, laying out all the evidence that they have gathered so far. Now, the White House hasn't participated in any previous hearings, as we know. The president has blocked documents from being handed over, people from coming in to testify. Uh, his lawyers did not attend the other hearing that the House Judiciary Committee had earlier this week. So we think it's pretty unlikely that they will suddenly decide to start participating now. But you never know. So lawmakers have been actually been asked to stay in Washington for the weekend. Can we expect articles of impeachment before Monday then? I think it's possible that the draft could be completed before Monday. Whether we'll see it before Monday is another question. I suspect, uh, knowing how Democrats have proceeded so far, they'll likely want to get that hearing uh, on Monday out of the way first before they formally present the uh, draft articles of impeachment for debate and then a vote in the House Judiciary Committee. We have a pretty good sense of what the articles of impeachment are going to center around. We know one will likely deal with obstruction of justice or obstruction of Congress. Another one could center on bribery and a third could focus on abuse of power. But, uh, you know, the, the evidence that they're going to marshal for those various articles, whether there could be a fourth or fifth article, we just don't know. I, I, I suspect that information will start to leak out uh, as those lawmakers stay in town this weekend to work on the articles of impeachment. Uh, but uh, I think a formal reveal will probably come early to mid next week. Nancy, um, it was interesting to hear uh, Speaker Pelosi yesterday when she made the announcement about the impeachment and yesterday night when she appeared on CNN uh, in, in a town hall, because one of the questions that was directed at her uh, from a reporter in that briefing that you were in yesterday was about her animus towards President Trump. Um, and right. she said something that was sort of interesting. She said that uh, when she was in the Congress uh, during the Bush administration and the uh, weapons of mass destruction uh, that she knew and others in the intelligence community knew ultimately to not be true, that there were no weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. She didn't personally, she was not a big fan of President George W. Bush, but she didn't believe right. that that rose to the level of impeachment. I think in a way, trying to make the point that it's, even if I don't like somebody, I'm or not like going to- policies. Or like the policies. It's personal, it's about the policies. It's about the policies. Yeah. I'm not going to take the country through this unless I really feel that this is impeachable. 
Exactly. And what she said in response to that reporter after she, you know, said that uh, he shouldn't mess with her and that, um, you know, she doesn't use words like hate and she doesn't feel hate, and talking about her, uh, her religious faith. What she also said was that, yes, she disagrees with this president on a whole host of issues, whether it is climate change or immigration, uh, but that that's not what this is about. She said that could be settled in the next election. This is about the Constitution. This is about the president's oath of office. And you're right that uh, she does have a historic parallel to point to. She was deeply opposed to a lot of what uh, President George Bush did, but never raised the specter of impeachment, even though a, a lot of her followers, a lot of uh, liberal Democrats would have been happy to go that route because she felt that that was a political disagreement, that was a policy disagreement, and this, she argues, is very different. So, Nancy, before we let you go, um, remind everyone that we did get the um, report from the Intel Committee about the impeachment inquiry, right? But And one little line, there was a line in that report that said something to the effect of the evidence as we have it so far, mm. right, thus far. Um, and so what we know that's coming out on Monday is the Justice Department's internal watchdog um, investigation into how the FBI handled its investigation into the Trump campaign's alleged ties to Russia and 2016 meddling in the election. So we've got new information now. Could this factor in to the debate and rumination about moving forward with um, the impeachment? It's possible. You know, the jury is still out on whether Democrats are going to look back to the Mueller report and the Russia investigation when crafting these articles of impeachment. There are two schools of thought here. Some Democrats say, look, this Ukraine situation in and of itself is an impeachable act. Let's stay narrowly focused so the public can really understand exactly what it is that we're doing here, and let's leave everything else out. Uh, then there's another school of thought that says, wait a minute, uh, Robert Mueller, in his report that was meticulously crafted after a couple of years of investigation, he laid out a dozen instances of possible obstruction of justice by this president. Why shouldn't we include that as well? Wouldn't that bolster our case? So you have these these two sides of the coin here, um, and, and certainly whatever comes out of that Inspector General's report, in addition to being sort of a, a bombshell uh, here on Capitol Hill, no matter what it says, it could also provide fodder for one side or the other of this democratic divide when it comes to how narrow to focus these articles of impeachment. So everyone is going to be watching to see what this highly anticipated report has to say. Mm -hmm. All right, Nancy Cordes for us on Capitol Hill. Nancy, as always, we thank you very much. Hey, look who's right underneath Nancy. Yes, let's bring in Paula Reed, Paula Reed who <laughs> is joining us now from the White House. Uh, uh, so, Paula, the president's been active on Twitter, as he has been uh, quite for quite some time uh, over the last couple of days, uh, but he did partake in the Christmas tree lighting ceremony, a really very beautiful and cool uh, moment whenever it happens uh, at the White House. But what are you hearing as to the president's uh, state of mind right now as this hearing looms on Monday? Well, the White House is trying to project confidence after the announcement by House Speaker Nancy Pelosi yesterday, and they're continuing to hammer home a narrative that the White House and its allies have been hammering for weeks, which is that this is a sham and there is not enough evidence to actively impeach the president. But there are risks for this administration. President Trump would be only the third U.S. president to be impeached, and he'd be the first one to then go and face voters in a re-election campaign. And overall, there has been some concern among Republicans about the lack of a coherent strategy to defend against this coming out of the White House. In the past few weeks, though, you have seen more of a strategy. It seems that they're really adopting a lot of the playbook that they used in the Mueller investigation, uh, refusing to participate, trying to undermine the credibility uh, of this probe. But we can expect that if this moves to the Senate, and we have a trial that the White House will likely be more actively involved. That's not just because it's a Republican-led Senate and they think that they could spin it in, in their favor, but it's also because we've at, we know the White House counsel, the director of legislative affairs, they have been on the Hill. They've been talking to Republicans about the process in the Senate and how they would want to craft that perhaps a little more aggressively than they have in the House. So listen, Paula, last night Speaker uh, Pelosi spoke about the White House's refusal to testify. So we have a little bit of sound of what she had to say. She was at a town hall meeting. Right. 
<laughs> President Trump has said uh, that if there's a Senate trial, uh, which it, there likely will be if the president is impeached, he would like uh, you and Chairman Adam Schiff to testify, to, be, to, be, to, to have to give testimony in a Senate trial. <laughs> Would you be willing to testify if it meant that people you want to hear from, such as Mick Mulvaney, the acting chief of staff, or, or John Bolton, the former national security advisor, would also have to testify? If there's some sort of deal cut, would you be willing to do so? It has nothing to do. They should be testifying because they have been asked to testify by Congress. It isn't a deal. It's about a system of checks and balances. So just explain that to us, because the president did tweet sort of a whole list of people on the Democratic side that he thought should testify to. And at the time, I was like, for what? Well, <laughs> like, well, but, you know, and Paula, you know this, right? Uh, on Fox News, which the president watches uh, a lot of, uh, one of their contributors, a, a legal contributor, Judge uh, Napolitano, says that he believes that President Trump could ultimately be asked to testify right. in that Senate trial. So can we just talk about sort of the difference uh, when we talk about the possibility of President Trump testifying versus Nancy Pelosi? Uh, sure. Uh, let, let's let's focus on specifically who we could still hear from mm -hmm. in the House at this point. What kind of got lost in, in her answer there is that she still thinks perhaps there should be some White House officials who should have to testify. And that's significant because the White House has continued to try to block them. There is a slim chance slim chance that we could still hear from Ambassador John Bolton, the former National Security Advisor. He has said it will be up to the courts to determine whether he would actually uh, participate in the impeachment inquiry. Now, his case is slowly working its way through the courts, but it's unlikely that there will be a final decision before the impeachment hearing wraps up. Now, one person we are highly unlikely to hear from is Acting Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney. His attorneys, a source close to, to his legal case, and his attorneys have said that if they, if executive privilege applies to anyone beyond the president or executive, uh, any sort of executive immunity, it's going to be the Acting Chief of Staff. So it's highly unlikely you're going to hear from him. Now, in terms of whether they want the president to participate or anyone uh, on, on the, the White House's side, that's up to them if they believe it would actually help their case. But based on previous investigations, we've seen the president's legal team does not necessarily believe that he makes the best witness, particularly in a politically charged setting like an impeachment trial. So I think it would be highly unlikely uh, that we would hear from the president in terms of Democratic lawmakers. The rules aren't exactly clear on what exactly could happen, who they could call and how this would work. But there is a, a, a strain of thought within the White House, and within the administration not to turn this into a circus. Don't drag this out any longer than you absolutely have to. Get over, get over, get, get this over with and focus on the issues that voters really care about. Hmm. Uh, it would be something for a sitting president of the United States to testify in a trial like that. Uh, Paula, to your point about uh, voters and how people are feeling, a poll conducted since the start of the House's public hearing show voters are still very divided. So with the election looming, how concerned is the White House about the impact that this could all have on the president's reelection campaign? Well, of course, both sides are concerned, right? Democrats, Republicans, everyone's trying to use this to their advantage. But the hope here within the White House is that they can use the impeachment inquiry to their advantage convince voters that this is an illegitimate proceeding and that this is being prioritized over issues that voters actually care about, like trade, like prescription drugs, those kinds of issues. Now, polls in some recent battleground states have shown that more voters in those states oppose impeaching the president. It's a slim majority, but it's still a majority. Now, yesterday, the president's manager of his re-election campaign, Brad Parscale, he was circulating some polling data uh, suggesting that the House Speaker was, quote, marching members of her caucus off the plank and in to the abyss. But when you dig into those numbers, it's really not clear that this will truly help the president. We're nearly a year out from the election. At this point, as you said, the country is divided. While a slim majority support the inquiry, the country is still very much divided over whether the president should be removed. So it just appears both sides are trying to take this process and spin it to their advantage when it comes to talking to voters. Democrats, as you've seen these recent ads out, uh, trying to argue that the world is laughing at the president, but the president and Republicans, they're arguing that their voters are very frustrated and angry uh, at Congress because they're not focusing on real issues, prioritizing impeachment instead. All right, Paula, thank you very much. Thanks, Paula. All right, as we mentioned, the House Judiciary Committee will hold its second public hearing this upcoming Monday. We will have a full preview on CBSN. 
starting at 8.30 a.m. Eastern, and we will have full coverage of the event at 9 a.m.